Hello everyone, this is Hank. Uh, I'm back today. I'm going to show you how to set the depth of field preview button on the Canon EOS RP. As you notice, like, uh, unlike the Canon DSLR, the um, Canon RP does not have a dedicated depth of field uh, preview button on the DSLR. It's usually in the front of the camera you know, to the right of the lens. There's a button there when you push it, and then you can preview the depth of field. Now, to demonstrate um, how the Canon um, camera works is that, okay, right now you're looking at the screen. Okay, now, right now it shows F16, okay, and now if I change it to 1.4, which is the maximum um, aperture that this lens is capable of, this uh, EF 50 millimeter F1.4. Because you can tell that there's absolutely no change in depth of field. And the reason that there's no change is because the Canon camera, uh, the RP included, it always show you the depth of field of the widest aperture the lens capable of. So the depth of field you're looking at now, or always, uh, is going to be set for the depth of field at f1.4. So now if you set the depth of field to, I mean uh, set the aperture to f16, is not going to make any difference in terms of the view through the viewfinder in the LCD. So therefore, in order for you to preview the real depth of field, you have to program one of the buttons on the RP to do that for you. So today I'm going to show you how I do it, okay? So um, to set it, you go to the menu, and, um, and actually this is the right uh, tab, the orange tab is what you really want. Now, if, if, if you're not on the orange tab, you can press the info button and then it will cycle it through, right? So you, uh, you go into a C, if in three operations are the, okay? You press it here and um, you may not be at number five, but number five is what you want, okay? So now you press set. Now it goes into um, a list of buttons that you can choose. Now you have to decide ahead of time what button are you going to use. Now I suggest that you find a button that you're not using very much. Now in my case, um, uh, the star button is basically uh, what they call an AE uh, lock, which is automatic exposure lock. Okay, normally when you press that button, you freeze the um, the setting for eight seconds so that you can recompose elsewhere and still maintain the, the, the exposure that you had focused on before. So that's basically um, how that thing works. Now, I never use that one. So I'm going to program this button to do the depth of field preview, okay? It's up to you what you choose. Okay, so when you press the set, okay, the default is the star. And uh, you cycle through uh, this one, okay, to look for uh, a symbol right there. This symbol here is a depth of field preview, okay. So when I press set on this, so now when I press that that asterisk button, it is a depth of field preview now, okay. And with that, I'm going to get out of the menu. That's all I have to do is to choose a button, program it. Of course, now when you press the star button, that's what it does. The depth of field no longer does the AE lock, okay? So, um, so that's kind of unfortunate because the RP doesn't have all that many buttons. And uh, you need to sacrifice a button if depth of field preview is important to you. All right, so for example, right now, when I press the star button, of course you can't see me press it, so you have to take my word for it. 
if I press it here in this case, okay, the displays uh, go away, it kind of signifies that I press it, so please um, pay attention to that. Um, you see that nothing happened. Why? Because the depth of field is naturally at 1.4, which is the widest aperture as we discussed before. Now, I go to f16 in this case. As you can see, that before I press the preview button, nothing happened, so the depth of field doesn't change. Now, when I press the depth of field preview, Okay, so now you see all three dogs are in focus because the F16 has got a pretty wide depth of field. So basically a lot more is in focus. Now if I let go of it, it goes back to the aperture of 1.4. Okay, so um, if I set this thing to F8 and press it, of course the depth of field is not as good. Now the middle dog, which is behind a little bit it is a little bit blurry. Okay. So I go down further to like say F4. You probably won't be able to see that dog very well anymore. I mean, you still can see a little bit, but it, it gets increasingly uh, blurry. If I go to 1.4. In this case, I don't even need to press a button, but it, and I press it just the same. Now the mirror dog is basically completely out of focus. Okay, uh, with that, that's all there is to it, to program a depth of field button. Okay, in case, like for example, if you take a picture of like a model and, and you want to make sure um, that, um, that something is actually in focus or maybe is in too much of a focus and you want it, certain things blurred out, then the depth of field button is going to be important uh, for your use. For example, if I'm taking a picture of a group uh, of people and I set it to f5.6 and I wasn't sure if 5.6 is adequate. So in this case, I can preview a depth of field and I can tell whether or not anybody is out of focus still, right? So that's the, the, the reason why you want to preview a depth of field. Uh, other than that, you don't really need to. With that, I thank you very much. Um, I hope this helps a little bit, and I will talk to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.